Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm excited to walk you through an amazing new addition to the button design feature. This is the ability to add custom icons inside of the buttons themselves instead of relying on the default icon set or having to layer visuals. What's even better is that these buttons can be almost any type of image file including SVGs, which means crystal clear images for those of you who know that image type. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and check this out. So for this demo, I'm going to use a page navigation experience to showcase the new types of icons that can be used in buttons. So you can see over here, I have three pages to navigate from. I have my active page that I'm on right here, which has no hover effects because this is the actively selected page. So you don't want it to appear like you can click on it. And then we have some hover effects on the other ones where if you hover over it, it changes color. And then if you click it, it actually inverts the color and then adds the colored icon into there. And if I actually hold control and navigate to that page in the desktop environment, you can see that I've switched the type of button. Now page two is active and then the other ones have those hover and click effects that I wanted to achieve. So let's come over to a dedicated buttons page and break these down and how I did this. Navigate down to buttons. And let's start with the active button at top. Open up my format button pane. And all of the settings applied, everything is remaining consistent. The fill is just the standard default hover and press that I have for those states with all three equaling the same color just so it doesn't appear that you can click this one. But the trick comes in play under the icon set. Now historically, the icons down here used to just be blank down through bookmark. You had these fixed icons. Now with the recent update for Power BI, you have an option for custom. What that means is that down here, I actually have a custom SVG image file in this button. If I delete this, you'll see that the button icon goes away and I have an option to add image. If I select that, I am navigated to a folder where I actually have a bunch of SVGs that I've downloaded from a site that just has a collection of them. But you'll notice down here under image files, the vast amount of image file types that you can actually import into here. So there's quite a lot of variation, including even animated GIFs and SVGs that can now go into the custom icon into here. So I'm going to put back the colored icon that we saw into there, which is my analytics color SVG that pops it into here. Now we'll see at the time of making this video, you might notice these faint little lines showing up. This is the first release of this feature into Power BI. I have provided some feedback that even though this SVG actually has no borders, it is still drawing some light borders in there. So that should be something that will get updated and fixed here in the near future. Now, another consideration as well, similar to SVGs, when you actually load them inside of a matrix or a table in Power BI, these also work best when they are a square shape because it's expecting that an icon typically is a square. It's not gonna be a rectangular oval or anything else, but a nice clean square. So whatever file that you put into here, the best practice recommends that it is an evenly sided square uh, for the image type that gets loaded into the button itself. And then the trick down here for the inactive button, and I actually rather like the inverted colors, but let's just walk through this one down here as well. So my default state, which is this black and white one, you'll notice that it is the analytics white SVG. That is also the same one that I have for my on hover, same thing. And then now for the press, that is switching to the color, which is how I get the white, kind of a grayish button, and then clicking it becomes that press active button that then switches to the colored SVG icon. And again, the fill and everything else is pretty straightforward. The default state is white. The on hover is more of a light gray. And then the on press becomes a off black color. And I do the same with the text. The default is a dark gray color on hover as well. And then on press, because the background becomes black, that becomes white. So that's how I get that click effect on this one here. And each of these pages basically just has one of these two versions of the button. There either is the active one here or the inactive one. And then for the inactive ones, I just have the action of page navigation to select whatever page that navigates to. Now there's a couple of other formatting considerations that I wanna mention as well. So with this configured in here, there's a few things in relation to the icon that I wanted to explain. The icon placement does have a few options in here. You can do left of text, right of text, above or below, or custom. Custom just places it on the left side by default, but here's what happens if I do left of text. It actually makes it a lot smaller, it removes the gap, and in general, I just don't particularly like the look of this. So what I've actually done is I do custom, which is places it on here, and then I actually separately format the text itself. So this is a custom placement in the middle on the left side, standard margins, and now if you take a look, actually what I've done with the text is I've selected a margin that allows it to scoot far enough past, plus also leave an adequate amount of spacing here. If I drop this back to the default, you'll see that it goes behind it. So that's why I placed it at a 50 pixel margin past this. So it allows this to be larger and then I can control how much space is in here between those. So it's a formatting preference for me, but I wanted a larger icon with the text shifted over. 
But that's one really great thing about buttons is you have a vast amount of control over the alignment and the margin pixels as well for both the text and the icons, which is what makes the built-in icon really powerful now. Now there's one more bonus little feature that I want to show you in here. There's a really cool video as an idea and inspiration that I came across on How To Power BI where he did something with button effects and bars. So let me go ahead and hop over to the video to show you what that is and then show you an improvement on that that I figured out on how to consolidate the number of objects required to make this effect. So here's the video in question where he created a really cool hover effect where this bar actually makes the text pop back and forth when you hover over it. So it starts like this, the hover effect becomes when you hover over it, the bar shows up and the text shifts to the right. However, there was one consideration that, for performance that I wanted to point out. You'll notice in here that actually it's three different objects. He uses two shapes and a button to create this pop-out effect. And for those of you who are aware, the more objects you have on the page, the slower the page renders in the service. So you want as few shapes as possible to achieve this effect. So I'm gonna show you how to do this effect, which again, heavily inspired by this. It was a very cool effect and I liked his idea for it. I just wanted to figure out a way to do this in a single button. So let's hop back into Power BI and I'll show you how to consolidate this within just one button rather than requiring separate shapes. So here's a similar effect that he achieved. We have my standard button here for the page selected. And then if I hover over this, the text moves over, that line pops up. And in addition to what he had as well, I was also able to create a click effect too, which was really nice because now that goes to a darker bar. So all of this was done with one object rather than three. So again, very cool idea from Boz. I loved it. It inspired me to obviously build something out like this, but I just wanted to figure out a way to consolidate these. So let's go ahead and see how I built this as well using custom icons. Coming over to the alt buttons down here, we have the two at the top. There's active and then there's the inactive. And if I use the inactive button as an example, let's come over to the icon and we'll see that the default state is blank. The on hover has an icon in here. There is a vertical line SVG that I brought into here that is light. And then on the on press, there is a darker version of that SVG that I brought in. So that is how I have the one, two, and three effects built into this, all with a single button. Now there's a little bit of a trick to this. Notice, by the way, that that bar does not look like a square. So actually, the image itself, if I highlight this here, actually is a square that's loaded into this. The trick being is that with the custom thing loaded in here and the horizontal alignment all the way to the left, and the trick really comes from the amount of spacing that I provide the text. So the text in here, notice that the left margin is only eight. So if I go to the on hover, notice that that left margin is 20. So it's moved from eight pixels away to 20 pixels. So it's technically overlapping the button that I have, which happens to just be transparent for the entire button except for that bar. And the same thing with on press. It is really that margin that is allowing the two overlaps but to achieve that button effect. And the cool thing is I actually built these custom bars in PowerPoint and I could export them as an SVG, which is a really cool way for you to be able to take this and make this and modify it yourself. So let's go ahead and pop in a PowerPoint and I'll show you how I built the button icons themselves. All right, so here's the actual PowerPoint deck that I have and you'll see here's the bars that I've included in the button. There's the light one here and there's the dark one for the on hover and on press. However, if I select this, notice that it has a square shape. Again, reminding you that it works best when you have a square image or SVG that is uploaded into the button itself. So the trick is what I've actually done is each of those objects on that first slide are grouped objects where I actually have simply a square that's on the page that has a transparent fill and outline and then the button on top of that. So when I right click and save this, I have an option to save as picture. So let's open this up and it gives me the option to name it. However, look at the save as type. If I drop this down, I have an option to save it as SVG. And this is possible when I'm using built-in PowerPoint objects or shapes. I'm able to save it as an SVG, which again will cause it to render very crisply at any size. And I can export this and then import it into that button. And as you can see here, I've selected SVG and then there are all those vertical lines that I created. So it's a really quick and easy process. You'll notice that I have a couple of other variations in here. If you wanted to do a forward slash, maybe if you wanted to have a button navigation with it on the bottom. So very easy just to build your custom icons in PowerPoint and upload them right back into Power BI if you wanted to. And adding them into here gives you that nice effect. The text moves over, you're able to click it. Similar process with the regular icons that I imported where you have an active and inactive state. And then you can see the other effects as well. Maybe if you wanted a forward slash or a backslash, you also maybe had a page navigation experience where you'd want it sitting on top. So all of those can be achieved with that same formatting principles. Overall though, I hope this gave you a great understanding of the types of ways you can use custom icons within your buttons. It's really, really powerful and unlocks a huge possibility for a lot of effects that you can now implement into the buttons themselves.
Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.